Good afternoon, everyone. Phil Brown here with JITCAD Cam. As always, another Fusion Friday video. So before I get into this one, just know that you are going to need the machining extension. You can activate your trial through the extensions button up here at the top right. Now, if you're looking to purchase the extension, go ahead and reach out to me directly with my email down below. I am a Autodesk VAR and your purchases through me do go to support in this channel and this content and being able to release more content as such. So with that, let's go ahead and jump inside of Fusion and see what we got. So as you're gonna see is right under the 3D tab, we do have the Deburr toolpath. If you're getting that little plug-in button, just know you don't have access to it and you're gonna have to activate the trial or purchase. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Deburr actual toolpath. I'm gonna give this actual toolpath a ball. And if you've ever taken any of my classes, you guys all know, when in doubt, okay your way out. So let's go ahead and hit that okay button and see what we get right out the start. So as you're seeing, automatically Fusion is going through and it's actually looking at all these edges. And with all those edges, it's breaking those edges with that tool. Now, the very first couple of things that I would want to do is one, I don't wanna feed in on this corner and feed up. Coming down would probably be more than okay to break that edge, but feeding up on that corner could actually cause some problems with that tool. So let's go in and avoid a couple areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and you could see I can exclude certain edges. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my Alt key and I'm just gonna pick those two edges and I'm gonna hit okay. And as you're gonna see here, we're now avoiding going all the way down that straight. We are going past still a little bit because the ball end mill needs to go deeper than that last radius it's cutting. But again, the control I have here to set this up and go past or below is worth it in itself. So again, unlike the actual trace tool path, we are accommodating for that tool and the step over of that tool, as well as the chamfer tool path that only works in 2D. Now, let's say we wanted to fillet these edges. So I don't wanna put like a square edge break on these. I would like to go in and I would like to actually say, let's do some filleting. And I'm gonna do filleting with multiple passes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's make five passes. And we're gonna make five passes in order to put a 10 thou fillet edge on that corner. So what you're gonna see now is, is it's gonna make multiple passes around this part. And what it's doing now is if we actually look at this a little more straight on, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my linking moves. But as you're seeing, we're coming around this corner now and we're making five passes and we're stepping down in a way to actually fillet that edge in order to deburr it. Again, this is a big part of why it's called a deburr toolpath and not a you know edge break or a chamfer toolpath. Because you have the ability to not only chamfer, you have the ability to also fillet these hard edges inside of Fusion 360. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this back so we're just making one pass. Another couple of really neat things about this actual tool pathing here is, again, I could do my tool orientation, I could pick a face to work on. I could manually select what edges I want to chamfer even. So as you're gonna see here, I went ahead and did so. And just like that, we're now going in and we're running around that edge of the part and cleaning it up. So if you wanted to do this still on a little bit more manual scale, you have the ability to do that. Now, this is where it really gets interesting because if I wanted to, if I set my Z to this face, and then let's say we wanna tilt the Z up like so, now, instead of repositioning my machine to do both of those actual pockets, I'm gonna pick each one individually and hit okay. And now what you're gonna see is we're able to actually edge break both of those and the profiles are moving and changing again to hold that 10 thou edge that we want based on our part. So again, this is the real power when we start to look at tool orientation plus just a three axis technique. Well, what about four axis and five axis? Well, let's go ahead and jump over to a lathe part. And in this lathe part, I would like to deburr it. So again, as I'm gonna go milling, we're gonna go ahead and say 3D deburr. And again, I'm gonna go out and pick my tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nice little small quarter inch ball. And let's go ahead and select that. And again, as always, just go ahead and hit okay. Make sure that we can get something done. So as you're seeing is we're actually coming straight on and let's get that linking moves turned back on. And for the sake of this, let's show the tool. So again, coming in on that face Z, I am running all the way around the outside of my part. So let's go ahead and edit something here real quick. Notice real quick, we're not doing this lower edge in any way because shaft and holder. So keep in mind, this tool path does have shaft and holder avoidance automatically, but I am going to say, I only wanna do a selected edge and I only wanna do this selected edge. 
Again, we're now avoiding that upper chamfer that's already there. So as you can see, I'm now running around the part in that CX kind of motion or CXY motion. Now, if I go into the deburr toolpath and I pick multi-axis, let's go ahead and swap that out for four axis. As you're seeing, we're rotating around Z. If you were doing this on a vertical mill, you would rotate around A axis more than likely. However, again, I can now point that tool directly at the center of rotary. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now what you're noticing is, again, we're coming in on that X side. So we're coming in on X now, not Z and C, but we're now X, C. So as you're seeing is we're coming in and we're running around the outside of that part, again, maintaining a certain point on our tool and creating that 10 thou edge break all the way around. But now if I add more things to this, this is the great thing about this, is let's say I want to add in a couple more edges here. Just like the actual chamfer toolpath, and the chamfer toolpath I'm talking about is 2D chamfer, it does have automatic edge avoidance. So we are avoiding slamming into areas on this part because of the tool tip and the, as close as we can get. But now we can take that one step even further. So if we go back into this tool path, we can actually tell it to go even closer in those edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the passes tab and these unreachable corners, we're gonna tell it cut with tool tip. And then we do have some radius settings here. But now we should be getting even closer to those edges. Or if you have square internal corner type features, we're going to actually get closer to them. So again, the deburr toolpath getting even into the fourth axis mill turn guys out there, super huge at the end of the day to be able to break those edges on your part. Now, one thing that I do love is when you have holes like this, and these are cross holes, they are on a cylinder face. They are a total pain to get a good deburr around the outside edge. Now, given you have a small enough tool for this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my deburr section again. And we're gonna go way, way, way down to a very small tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my actual edge width even more to get down in there. But as you're gonna be able to see, and again, I did that based on three axis. I forgot to select my faces. So as you're seeing here, I did select my face. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and set my Z to that hole now. And there we go. So again, shaft and holder is gonna cause me a problem here, guys. So you do have to be aware of that. So let's just stick this tool out way more than we ever would actually at the machine. You guys should have adapters to step this down. So let's go ahead and say overall length is two or three, I apologize. And we're gonna stick that out by two inches and that should give us plenty clearance. Good thing about this job, guys, is I get to be a pretend machinist most days, but as you're seeing, we're now deburring again in a three axis world. So if your machine could go in based on, you know, your X, Y, you could deburr that hole. But again, I could go back once again and say based on fourth axis all over again. And now I could come in with that four axis mentality and I could actually tilt that tool and deburr that hole. Cool thing still, guys, you could always pattern this stuff. So we could say new pattern, circular pattern around center, yada, yada times. Again, still works the same inside of Fusion every way possible. However, you're now able to actually 3D deburr edges and make sure you're putting a true deburr on those edges. So let's go look at five axis now. So we go back to this tool path that we had created. I'm gonna go ahead and turn ourselves back to automatic, unselect tool orientation. And as you're gonna see now, we're coming down from the top. Now, if I go into that path and go over to my multi-axis features, we're gonna go ahead and say five axis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now we're gonna deburr a lot of this part, which is gonna seem quite extreme, right? So as you're seeing here is we're even getting down into the bottom edges. There's a lot going on. Like if we were to simulate this right now, let's go ahead and actually kick on our in-process stock. But this tool in general is tilting way past where it should and causing all kinds of errors and problems. So as you can see, we're upside down in the machine. Plain and simple, that tool's coming in. It's trying to actually maintain the tip angle to the edge. So again, in the great world of Fusion, you do have a lot of things that we could do. So some of those things could be is one, we could actually tool axis limit this. We could actually set a set point on our tool. We could actually even say fixed tilt while cutting. 
So what this does is this locks it out at an angle and stops it from actually moving all over the place. So again, as you're now seeing just that one little checkbox, if we had room on this part, I know it's a little tricky with these actual lower pieces in the way, so let me turn these off here. But let's say, for example, we were sitting somewhere with some tabs or something like that. So again, if I go in and I simulate this, we now have that ability to maintain our tool at a specific angle, and we only reposition as needed. And again, we are making some collisions here on the backside, and that's our tool hitting our stock at the lower portion. But you're seeing how easy this is for me to go in and create those deburring cycles in Fusion 360, whether it be three, four, or five axes. So with that said, as always, I'm Phil Brown with JIT CAD Cam. We got, love your guys' support questions you've been sending to us through our website and our support email. Keep it up. It keeps me gainfully busy all day, every day. As we always say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And you guys do know us over here, and we're here to take care of you. That being said, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe, and have a great rest of your weekend.